Hi there, Social Studies 20 here. I'm going to take a look at an example, a case study now of, of the UN in action, internationalism in action. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a current event and apply it to, to our theory behind the purpose of the UN and, and evaluate, does it always work? And the current event I picked, you probably heard of, I'm sure, Donald Trump orders the U.S. to halt funding to the World Health Organization over coronavirus response. To refresh your memory, uh, as you know, the UN, uh, or rather the WHO, is an agency of the UN. Um, so there's the WHO down here. So it's a UN agency that is governed by the UN and governed especially by the five members, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. And so what I thought we'd do is we'll look at some of the details from uh, the actual current event and then we'll watch a couple of videos later on and, and establish some perspectives on on the handling of the coronavirus response as an example of internationalism and it'll be the theme of our source interpretations for the week as well. So I did a bit of research and here are the main points, here are the main actions taken by the WHO as it responded to COVID-19. December, and, and these these are the, the official stats as reported by the UN. Um, we have to recognize and realize that, that these dates and events can change as, you know, bloggers and, and historians study the, the pandemic as they will be for years. And I'm sure a lot of these stats and, and digits will change, but this is the best we've got for now. Um, you might remember seeing it on the news. We were actually on Christmas break, but in late December of 2019, um, Wuhan, China reported a cluster of pneumonia cases in Wuhan province um, and, and they labeled it a, you know, a, a pneumonia or what is known as the novel coronavirus. And no one thought a whole lot of it, although I do remember seeing it on the news as I was eating supper or something during the break. January 4th, 2020, so we're into the new year now. The WHO reported on social media, Twitter, that there were a cluster of pneumonia cases with no deaths in, in Wuhan, Hubei province, China. And I think the, the important thing is, is that they were reporting no deaths, meaning that, you know, at the time it didn't look like this, you know, virus was going to be that serious. Now, it's important to note that all the WHO is reporting at this time is what China tells them. So China is reporting no deaths. And that's what the World Health Organization was reporting. That's all they could report. And this is kind of the time frame where Donald Trump, I think, um, that's what he's leaning on. That's that's what he's going after the World Health, Health Organization over for was their handling of this time frame. Um, the time between the cases first came up to the time at which they reported it being a pandemic of international concern. That's what Donald Trump is honing in on, um, a window of a couple of weeks, where in his contention, the WHO should have done more. China should have done more to warn the world about what this virus was, how infectious it was, and how deadly uh, it could be if it got outside of the borders of China. So let's just look at the dates and what happened and see how accurate Trump's assessment was. So January 4th, they report a cluster of cases in China, but no deaths. And again, all the WHO can report is what China tells them. Um, it's not in the WHO's jurisdiction, authority, to go into China and conduct their own investigation without the permission of China which makes me think of what we learned earlier in our lesson. Um, principle number seven, the UN is not authorized to intervene in things that are of domestic uh, concern to a, a local jurisdiction. In other words, if China does not give the WHO permission to go into China and investigate, the WHO can't go into China and investigate. And that might be the item that throws Trump's contention off the rails. 
the WHO only reported what China was telling them because that's all they could report. Anyway, um, January 13th, the first confirmed case of COVID-19 is reported outside of China in Thailand. So it's moving fast. January 20th, the WHO was finally allowed into China to, to conduct their own visit. And that's just what they do. They report back on the 22nd um, that they need more time. Um, they need some time to assess whether the outbreak is a public health emergency of international concern. Um, they're given 10 more days. They come back in before the 10 days are up on January 30th and they say, yep, yeah, um, we recommend and we declare um, the novel coronavirus outbreak and it is indeed um, an emergency of international concern. And so given that timeline of events, you know, what we're going to do today is look at some more details, perspectives, opinion and decide, you know, just how warranted was Donald Trump's accusation um, that the WHO didn't handle things quickly enough. They, they weren't thorough enough in warning other people. Because something that you need to understand is that uh, international travel was not suspended from China until late January. Until it was, you know, reported as a, a, a virus of international concern, planes were coming and going from China, um, people carrying the virus from China that whole time. And that's what, what Donald Trump would be going after. If China had warned people as early as December 2019, you know, you could have closed the borders of China to other nations and contained the virus in China. But from Trump's contention is by the time they declared this a public international emergency, it was already too late. The disease has been exported from China to probably all other nations by that time. But something to also keep in mind is that the WHO is not allowed into China until uh, January 20th to actually conduct an investigation and then report what I guess would be the truth. Through this in for you too, it's a big deal that America is halting its payments to, to the WHO. America, by far and away, is the largest contributor of funding to the WHO. So it will be a crippling blow to the WHO. It'll mean they either go without the funding or other nations are going to have to step up to help fund China or help fund the WHO so they can do what they've always done. The WHO is very important to developing countries and curbing the spread of things like polio, malaria, HIV. The WHO saves you know, probably millions of lives a year in the developing world through its efforts of inoculation and vaccination, um, things like that, the World Health Organization. So it is a big deal. Um, a lot opinions vary from, from, you know, vilifying Trump to blaming the WHO for his own inaction. I mean, after all, Donald Trump did did uh, respond very slowly to the threat of coronavirus, as, as I'm sure you know. He didn't do enough soon enough to, to curb the spread in America, and they suffered a, a lot because of it. So you get opinions on that, but, but also people that sympathize with Donald Trump and that China wasn't forthcoming enough with, with what they knew about the virus. I mean, I had read accounts, and then again, who knows, but I'd read accounts that that virus was was, was uh, no one in China as early as mid-November, um, in, in which case, why didn't they tell people um, that we could have done much more to prevent the spread and saved a lot more lives. But as I told you earlier on, history will, will continue to revamp itself until we get the truth behind uh, coronavirus, but that, that'll be in a long, long time. So what you're going to do, uh, I've got a, a website for you to visit after I'm done here. It's about a 10 minute, you know, it's a conversation among an expert panel of people that were kind of in the know on the beginning of the virus in China. And you'll just listen to what they have to say, evaluate what they say, and just quickly summarize what were each of the perspectives of those people as you listen to what they have to say of China, America, and the coronavirus.
um, a lot of people would say that Donald Trump is just looking for a scapegoat to to cover up his own inaction, and that could be true. After all, 2020 is a, an American election year. In November of 2020, Donald Trump will be up for re-election, and he, he might be looking for a way out of that fix. You know, he doesn't want to be blamed for all of the deaths in America. You know, to some people, that's why he's scapegoating China and the WHO. And, and again, as you're as you're learning about all of these things, as you watch the the brief ten minute video, be thinking, how does this fit in with the course? Is this an example of nationalism in action? Is this an example of internationalism? What does it say about internationalism? What does it say about the UN? Is it working? Is it failing? And and if so, why? Um, it's just a really good way to evaluate what we're learning by using a current event that that is very close to home. I mean, you are living the fallout of, of the coronavirus, and we probably will for quite some time too. Um, and that's not mentioning the economic fallout that you will be paying for with taxes for the rest of your life um, as we, we combat the problem.